is there a similar way to look at colorism and who can be allies in dismantling colorism, I think is what they were asking. Hey, Ange. Hey, Les, how are you? Hey, red lipstick girl. <laughs> it's good looking, good looking. Listen, you know how competitive I am, right? Oh my gosh, yes, I do. No, so I not know that about I didn't. <laughs> so <laughs> earlier when you said, I'm almost ready, I just have to put on some lipstick. I said, I'm gonna put on eye makeup then. <laughs> You're such a child. I said, I'm going to put on eyeliner. She's putting on lipstick. I got to raise her one. You see what I have to put up with? Welcome to a new episode of Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn. I am Angela, and that is my bestie, Leslie. You see what I have to deal with? Pray for me. Um, we started this podcast because we wanted to inspire and give older women permission to think deeply and to act boldly. So if you're an older woman who is inquisitive, or if you love one, or if you want to become one, please hang with us for a little bit. We won't keep you for long, but just enough. You'll be glad you did. So I'd like you to press like and subscribe now. <laughs> and if you turn on notifications, then you'll get notified whenever we drop new episodes. And I think you'll like it because we're sometimes silly. We're often poignant. You often learn things from us and we give you a good thing to talk about. So press like and subscribe, come back to us. And we love that you give comments to us. And that yes, is an excellent today, segue. Very good, very good, very good. So today we're gonna to be talking about some comments that we got, some really, really well, just fresh perspectives on a video that we did, an episode that we did uh, a few weeks ago mm -hmm. um, on colorism. And we wanted to read some of those comments and get some more from you and also share our perspectives on them. Um, mm -hmm. They were just really, really deep. We love we love our listeners. We really do. OK, so I'm going to start. We're going to take turns and um, I'm going to start. OK, my screen went away. OK, here we go. Here we go. Um, by the way, the 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 name of that episode, the title is Y'all ain't black enough to talk about colorism. And I, I, I also wanted to talk about what Leslie and I, some Hi, of the conversation we now. had about coming up with that name. Um, mm, okay. okay. So the first comment I'll read is from, oh, I need my glasses. It's from Brooklyn 112. Shout out to Brooklyn 112, appreciate you. I love your channel, especially because I'm a um, I'm a Brooklyn black boomer. Hey, welcome to I've the club. Heard, I've heard several <laughs> colorism conversations discussed by light skinned women, and it always leads back to their experiences as she said fair and then she crossed it out and said light skinned women desirability by men causing conflicts with dark skinned women is always discussed. Your conversation was mindful, but it was centered around your having light skin. Even using the term fair to describe skin tone, although subliminal, can be problematic. I would love to see this conversation with other voices in the room. We are working on that. Um, but Les, what do you think about that comment? I, thank you, Brooklyn 112, gave me pause and something to think about because only after I saw that, I mean, I've been using the term, I typically refer to myself as light skinned, but um, I never saw any problem with saying fair skinned also. And then 
you know, I, I love the fact that even at this age, I, I still learn things, you know, and um, and fair is absolutely judgmental. Mm hmm. You know, it's on a spectrum. Yeah, the fair you know? maiden. And it's also a, a, a... It's a trope. It's a trope. It's a, it's a, it's a linking of better. Yes, um, yes. To light, lighter. Yeah, um, yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fair, it's, right. Mm-hmm. It, it reminds me of, uh, of good hair. Yes. You know, like yes. good hair. Yes. I mean, that's that's pretty obvious. But I grew up, you know, as Brooklyn 112 was also a boomer, then mm -hmm. they all, all also know what that you want good hair. And mm -hmm. if you didn't have good hair, you put lye in your hair and burned it up in order to, for the appearance of what we what they called good hair. Mm -hmm. um, and it was only as I grew older that what I realized good hair is the hair that you have on your head that that you take care of, you know. But um, but yeah, thank you for that comment. It really. Um, yeah, we obviously because we're both light, light skinned um, black women, we only have one perspective mm -hmm. and. It's we've not only, only the we've only lived one perspective. We only have lived and experienced one, although, you know, we also have other um, darker skinned um, people that we can compare our experiences to. Right. And we can ascribe the fact that um, maybe the difference is because of our colors or, you know, who, who knows, mm -hmm. but man, yeah, we got a lot of comments about that. And um, I love it. Keep it coming. Thank you for that. Okay. You want the next one? Are you ready? Or you want me to? I'm not ready. I'm, you okay. know, me I'm, not technology. Ready. I'm not ready. I ain't ready. Okay. I ain't next able. comment is from Michelle Forrester, 9605. Thank you for leaving your comment. Uh, Michelle says, I'm in my 30s, love your discussion on colorism. It is totally relevant today, especially in light of current discussions on blackness, like Janet Jackson's comments and opinions on Kamala Harris. I believe everyone is entitled to their opinion. Each black person's experience of colorism is valid while acknowledging we live in a society that privileges proximity to whiteness. Talking about how colorism affects an individual's quote unquote black experience is important. Oftentimes I feel that this is difficult to discuss, that it is difficult to discuss colorism within um, blackness and find that when you don't have a definition of blackness, that lines up with the one drop rule in America that people give you the side eye. I describe myself as chocolate or make a foundation like shade it. between Maybelline Fit Me Foundation 355 to 6 to 368, depending on the time of year. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm telling you, the young folks, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> now, now, Michelle Forrester brought up a few really, really good points. Mm -hmm. One, we all know what's coming up in the political sense with Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. Can you guys please say Kamala properly? Please. Just so that I don't comma. have to. Exactly. It's punctuation and, and then la. Comma. I find myself whenever I hear it, I correct people. Yeah. And I said, you mean Kamala, you know, <laughs> and very often they appreciate. It. But anyway, the conversation that comes up about um, her blackness, is she black enough? Is she not black? Has she not acted black? And mm -hmm. you have to prove your black card. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's obviously it's divisive because what we need to remember is that race black, white, it's all a construct. Mm -hmm. It's its something that society has made up. And things are only, we, we use the term black 
only in its opposition to whiteness, you know, and we also have to recognize that black and white means so many different things in different cultures, different communities, that there is no one meaning of it. And very often when we have these destruct uh, conversations, we get them wrong Mm -hmm. or they don't cover all cases. Look right. at the um, people in some of the Latin American company uh, mm-hmm. countries mm-hmm. that Dominican Republic, for example. I yeah, Brazil, um, Brazil Cuba. Yeah. There are many right. um, places where people refer to themselves as white or black, and they are way browner. They are way more close to Maybelline Foundation number three sixty eight <laughs> than we are. <laughs> But um, but again, you know, it's used as a construct to organize and separate and categorize people for whatever purposes, be it political or otherwise. Right. You know, it gets really dangerous. So the incident with uh, Janet Jackson, as I understand it, um, unfortunate. And I'll tell you why it's unfortunate. Not just, I mean, I um, I like Janet Jackson, but it has nothing to do with um, I li- me liking her as an artist. Her, the reason exactly. it's unfortunate is because we don't need to be talking about this right now when we right. have a month to go before an election. Right, right. This is not important and it's just fluff and this is right. distracting. Yeah. Um. That's really the reason why it's dominating a lot of the news and what have you. And mm-hmm. I don't think that it's, it's an appropriate time to talk about such nonsense as who's right. black. Apparently, Janet Jackson said, I didn't know that Kamala Harris was black. I thought her father was white. Um, I believe that's what was said. And not only that, though, um, someone um, uh, you may know the, the, the characters a little better than I corrected corrected her um someone in her camp mm-hmm. but then he was either reprimanded or let go and um oh. so pretty much her position stands because the person who tried to correct it from her camp i didn't know that they said mm-hmm. that yeah you know um um this this is um it's either Roland Martin or Karen Hunt <laughs> that i heard that from mm-hmm. um and so basically her position stands because they, there was a correction and then the correction was retracted. Mm. So that even made it just that much more mucky um, and almost kind of um, definitive, you know, ab- about I her, don't, her point of view. I don't really understand why. Well, there's many things I don't understand about the world these days. Yeah. yeah what I was yeah. going to say is I don't understand the import of it. It was it is obvious that her comment was made out of ignorance. And I don't mean that in a pejorative way. I mean, ignorance in its uh, definition of meaning not knowing. Right. In the benign so, sense. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. In a benign sense. Mm-hmm. So what I mean is if she was unaware First of all, why does anybody care? But if she is on a, we know why people care. What am I saying? What planet do I live on? (laughs) But if she is unknowing about the uh, parentage of Kamala Harris and the fact that she thought her her father was white when he is not, he is a uh, black Jamaican man, Mm -hmm. then why is that news? Okay, I stand corrected. My bad, my mistake. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You want to hear Rhythm Nation? You know? (laughs) (laughs) Um, <laughs> but but it's yeah. big. It's, it's 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 being talked about, right? Right. And um, yeah. So you 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 said um, you said a couple of things that I want to highlight. You said that um, black is a construct, and we know that it is. And sometimes, though, asserting that position. Um, it, I, I, I have a negative reaction to it because it is both true and it is 
to me, dismissive of the fact that this construct is such a dominant part of our lives, right? Both mm-hmm. things are true. Mm-hmm. It is yep. just a construct, yeah. but it colors, no pun intended, every aspect of our lives as um, people of African descent. And so- But that's why it's there. That's I get why it. it's there. I get it. So, <laughs> so, so that it can color so correct. much of our, you know, so it can categorize, so correct. it can separate. Correct. So we, so it can compare, you know, right. so a box gets ticked or not ticked. Yeah. Right. And so to, um, so anyway, so I just kind of want to say that, 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 um, that truth creates some discomfort in me because it's almost like, it's almost like we can't just say that by itself because to say it by itself is like a it's like a one-legged table it doesn't complete a mm. picture it becomes therefore what therefore just ignore it therefore mm-hmm. don't give it any weight therefore but then we live in this world where it's such a big part of our our um you know, the the Mm -hmm. separations and and judgment and all the things. Anyway, just kind of wanted to say that. The other thing that I thought about was, because you mentioned this idea of being Black, that it's not this, um, there isn't this um, universal way to think about it. There isn't a universal understanding of the word. There is not, Mm -hmm. um, there is not a consistent diasporic um, use of the word. And I remember and what I was looking up because I couldn't remember her name. I think it's um, Tyla. I think that's how it's pronounced. The the young woman who did um, Water, that really famous. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. She was on... Um, South Africa. From South Africa. Mm-hmm. She was on, I want to oh, say it was, was um, Charlemagne. The Breakfast Club. The Breakfast Club, and I saw it, but um, I it's it's been a while, and I only watched it once. I watched it before there was controversy. I watched it, and uh. I saw that when she was asked about something having to do with her being black, mm-hmm. whomever was sitting with her, she turned to them and kind of got, and so what that was interpreted as is she's not want to say that she's black. When mm-hmm. in fact, in South Africa, there are these different definitions of black. You're colored, if you're um, uh, Indian or mixed, there, there are these different, mm-hmm. very clear, um, and it's not, it's not a, in a hierarchical way, is my understanding, as it is in Dominican Republic. I wouldn't put Cuba in the list, Les, to be honest, because I don't know that Cuba has this, the same kind of um, um, caste system, if you will, around color. I don't know if that is as dominant as it is in the Dominican Republic, where they're, they I have see. like all Probably these Probably not. Probably right. not, because... Right, so yeah. I just want to pull that out mm-hmm. because you know um, although i know personally of some cubans obviously um many are here in florida in miami and yeah. um someone i work with pretty closely you know kind of um has told me some stories about how these Color things work shows up. Right, yeah. Right, right, right yeah okay fair enough um so that what you said reminded me of Tyla because she was being reprimanded by um, black folks in America mm-hmm. by, you know, saying or or wondering if it was appropriate for her to. Or not readily correct. saying, yes, right. I'm yeah. black or whatever. It's, 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 it's different. And we have to kind of understand that too. They're diff- different cultures. And um, I don't think, I don't know this for a fact, but I would, my understanding is that it is not necessarily a um, proximity to whiteness that shows up there. It's really a way of kind of defining versus creating a hierarchy better than, worse Mm -hmm. than, 
um, in 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 South Africa where she was from, but but mm-hmm. there was some backlash around that blackness. Wow. So those are two things that um, came to mind. I want to go back to Michelle because um, had you finished the the points that you wanted yes. to make there? Um, she also talked about. Um, she also talked about. If I can't find it, I will move on. Um, yeah, there's this kind of another discomfort I feel around this is is that this further on the construct thing, this construct of if you have one drop of um, blood from someone from the The one um, drop rule um, with African ancestry, then that means that you're black. That was placed upon us along with the all of the things that are negative about um, being of the um, having African ancestry. And now we've adopted that. Black people have adopted the one drop rule when it was something that uh, was In other words, I know he's black because his great great grandfather is black. So he has one drop. Right. So we now use it. Right. Or, as or defining or someone, who's black and who's not. Yeah. 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 And, and, and just the ways that we very, very um, casually, you know, think of, of um, Kamala Harris. She's black. She is half black and half um southeast uh, asian southeast asian Asian. right and so but she's black and i believe that myself because i was socialized the same way southeast asian yeah south asian yeah i i i I would just say indian but um Mm -hmm. or east indian so um uh we have now adopted this designation that was placed on us because they wanted their whiteness to be pure and having anything black in them was considered um, an an, um, aberration. So Mm. now it becomes something that we've adopted, which from a kind of um, logical thing, it creates some dissonance for me, but I also agree and 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 um and support <laughs> and embrace the idea. but it's 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 almost like i have to remember we'll take them we'll take them bring them on yeah, come on it's kind come of on this, you're um, get in the fold this full tent you know um thing um so that's something that i wanted to to call out too all right um thank you for on? that comment yes thank you thank you thank you michelle michelle all right Foster. I'm it's going to read. We have to move a little faster. Okay, okay, okay. You trying so, to tell me I talk too much? LGIBS. That's what she's trying L- to tell me. Gibbs, maybe 666. All okay. right. I never thought much about my hue until I was in college. Growing up around family members on my mom's side who passed for white and on my dad's side with dark skin and strong African features and everything in between, I don't remember any conversations about one being better than the other. But when I got to college, being light skinned got you dances at the party. Mm. So suddenly I felt unattractive. And that has stayed with me to some degree to the present. The downside of being light skinned happened to my grandmother Ruth, my grandma Ruth, when a home health worker verbally abused her about her skin tone. The whole issue is fascinating, and I look forward to more discussions on the subject. Thanks. Oh, yes. thank you. Thanks for thank your input. You, this is really good. Six, six, six. So, Les, what do you think was meant by, um, why was it that when he got dances at the party, I don't know if it's a he, when this person got dances at the party, they felt um, unattractive. They suddenly felt unattractive. Well, no, I think that this person is probably brown, darker skinned. So um, they said that the downside of, uh, excuse me, that only when they got 
to college. Ah, I see. They like got the light skinned people got dances, and I'm assuming that they did yes. not. I understand. I understand. And again, you know, yes. it's like what we were taught. Yes. You know, is attractive, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. Right. Right. You know, Nana Lena didn't want her fair skinned grandchildren to have dark marks on them, you know. Yeah. Unless they spread, maybe. <laughs> They're on your knees and elbows now, but tomorrow they will be on your cheeks. I am going to eradicate that. <laughs> Conspiracy Jen 85 said, I think lighter complexions could possibly be used to fill quotas and then still be un undermined in rooms of important conversations. Mm -hmm. Damn, Skippy, that absolutely helps. Well, we got the black one on the team. Mm -hmm. We ain't going to respect him and treat him like one of us, but we got him. So tick, we got right. that. Right. Wow. And, and, and how much... Is it they're not going to respect or is the person who's taking up the seat going to um, go along to get along? And whose well, fault is that? Well. Okay. Oh. Ooh, I, know, right? I also think that lighter skinned people may experience more racism because of their complexions proximity to whiteness but darker complexions will experience more colorism because of the psychological, social, economic system where a light, lot of the work-related, network-related, and romance-related opportunities are not given to us as much. Wow. I know. I so know. remember in our talk, you contrasted or compared racism and colorism. This person really picked this up and mm -hmm. said mm -hmm. um, racism in this regard, because mm -hmm. even as light as we are, we still mm -hmm. experience racism as though, you know, right. we were any other color. Mm -hmm. um, yet colorism comes in with the other. Wow, that's pretty mm -hmm. profound right. conspiracy. That is you need to change your name Our to people. right on point and whoa. <laughs> 2282, no. <laughs> I see you, 2282. <laughs> yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. I didn't read the rest of the um, comments, but. Oh, wait. Wait. wait uh, and finish then. Hers. I think we have to finish after. Finish hers, please. Okay, hold on. It's that's deep. Thank you. Yes. Um, white people would feel more intimidated by a light skinned black person that can pass for white or racially ambiguous because that is a threat to their job, network and romance opportunities. Mm. If a dark skinned person shows up in those executive spaces, they know we had to work hard and not just float by on our looks. But it is still not a threat to their network and romantic opportunities because they still assume the standard of beauty. Wow and presumed social class mobility. And it's still like a one in one to 15 over 30 in the executive spaces. Lastly, Emmett Till was light skinned, green eyed child, was a light skinned, green eyed child. And again, in a white space, racism caused his demise. Mm -hmm. He would have been exalted and promoted in a black space, especially when educational opportunities and work opportunities are concerned. Right. Mic drop. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mic drop. Um, There's so much there to unpackage. So and much. I love the, um, how they really explained um, mm -hmm. how racism shows up mm -hmm. versus colorism may show up in other, mm -hmm. in other ways and right. still isms. Right. Right, right. Um, yeah, I, I, we won't have time to go mm -hmm. into what I was thinking, but I was thinking about how um, the the idea, and this, this kind of comes back to how we entitled our 
video, um, our um, previous episode, Y'all Ain't Black Enough to Talk About Colorism, the idea that your hue, I'm going to use that word now, thank you to the, um, to the subscriber who used that hue, um, I think it was L. Gibbs, that that can cause so much of um, kind of the idea that you don't fit in, you don't fit in any space, right? You're not black enough for mm-hmm. black folks. You're not white enough for white folks. So it's, it, it is a, um, it is a colorism is at play. But again, I don't think neither of us kind of landed on what is the definition of mm-hmm. colorism. And is it, Is it um, something that only kind of denotes that there is there is um, different ways to view people across the 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 spectrum, Um, or is it defined as the way that darker um, hued um, people are treated compared to lighter skin hue? There is there is one. um, This is I like that word hue. I know. I like. I, I like, like it that too. I like it. I like it very much. There's one. Where, I can't find it now, but it. Oh no, that's not it. Uh, maybe it was a reply to another one that it's making it not show up. But it I was. Think, yeah. Oh, this is this is what it was, and I can't find it. So I'm sorry. Okay. I'm not giving a shout out to the person who left the comment, but it had to do with. how much lighter hued black folks can be a part of the solution instead of being um, being uninvolved Ooh. Ooh. or being passive or being passive actively. on the sidelines if right. we are not and so I was like, Whoa. It's like especially in the context of racism and our expectations of how um, white folks have a responsibility okay. to address and racism. Allies. I was like, well, it's something to think about. Okay, so and, can you expand on that a little bit more? So, um, Ooh. again, if we frame it in the way racism, and it's not that racism applies to, racism is a is a really good way of of getting a group of people, I'm going to say a group of American people to really hone in on nuances because we, we know what racism is, Mm -hmm. you know, in general. So ubiquitous. Exactly. I mean, it's it's running a, a whole political system. It's yes. running a whole yes. election. I mean, we can get into that in a different conversation, but exactly. I exactly. know exactly why the Republican candidate is where he is, is uh, leading or, or um, equal in polling to a person who is educated uh, former senator, a former prosecutor, a former governor, et cetera, et cetera, with all of this experience Mm -hmm. and why the race is neck and neck. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, it really starts with an R and ends with an ism. Right. Mm -hmm. Because when... (laughs) Rism? Is it rism? (laughs) (laughs) And I think there's an ace in there somewhere. (laughs) But what it is, is, you know, so many people don't want want to admit to the browning of America. Yeah. Or you they know? don't want to feel they want they they want to remain in discomfort over it. And well, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And and can't even imagine. Right. What a more unified brown ish <laughs> America <laughs> could look like yeah and could be like yeah. you know it's like this is not a pie right it's not like if you take half of it you're going to be losing something yeah 
but we can't imagine. So if we demonize a whole group of folks Mm -hmm. and change laws and, and you know, Mm -hmm. it's just anyway, anyway, anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So we know what, what racism looks like. Yeah. And even if we don't agree on, you know, even if there is there is a debate around different aspects. Around, of is it ra- are so you on. racist or are it's, you not racist? Right, we do still know. Be- right. It still becomes is. this this thing that we can. Right. Um, right. Develop um, um, analogies to mm-hmm. as we talk about other things. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the 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 what I think that um, they were pointing out here is that in the same way that we think about allyship and how um, racism is a problem that was created by white folks and they're responsible for dismantling it because we didn't we didn't create it we can tell you how it affects us but we you know we um, a part of racism is is who holds the power and so Mm -hmm. that's I, i don't think it's it's so hard to argue that now that that is kind of one of the key differences between prejudice and discrimination and racism as my, as i understand it is who has the power so mm-hmm. and i won't go into that but i i don't think that um from a societal perspective that black people can be racist because of that we don't hold the power we can say we can have individual we can have power right we can be an employer and we mm-hmm. can discriminate against someone who's white because you, we have that power. But outside of that, um, that um, bubble in America, that black person mm-hmm. doesn't have the power, mm-hmm. right? And so the, I know that's controversial. I, I would be willing to argue with anyone around this. However, what we're talking about here is that, um, is there a similar way to look at colorism and who can be allies in dismantling colorism, I think is what they were asking. Mm. Um, Do we play a role? Do the people who are more privileged in this construct, can they play a role in dismantling it? in the same way that we talk about how- Wow, that's something to think about. I know you cannot put this back in a box. All right. So That's whoever what... left that comment, we need to hear more from you because I really like that's really provocative. Yes. That's very that that the wheels were turning. Yes. And um, exactly. I would love to continue that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's. um it's, uh, I think it might be embedded in some comments. Yeah, I think they commented yeah, so on we can someone find else's. Because we yeah. can kind of reach out to them. Mm-hmm. We can mm-hmm. reach out to them because it's like, yeah. yeah. What yeah, were you so thinking? This, um, Say more. <laughs> this episode got um, quite a lot of views for, for us. It's one of the um, higher views um, and so it definitely sparked some interest and we would love to hear from you if you'd like us to talk about it some more. We have been thinking about bringing in some of the members of our friend group who are darker hued than we are and maybe have a, a broader conversation. But let us know if you'd like us to talk about this in, um, in another episode. Thank mm-hmm. you for listening. Take us out, Les. This has been another ep- a light-skinned episode. <laughs> oh please forgive her. You know, I had to, I had to you <laughs> know. Please forgive her. <laughs> this has been a fair-skinned episode of Black Boomer. <laughs> I'm relentless. <laughs> this has been another episode of Black Boomer Besties from Brooklyn. Brooklyn.